What is good, my people? We are back again with another gem. Now, this video is probably one of the most highly requested videos I get asked for all the time. And it's basically how do you read charts? How are you able to predict the price of certain stocks, cryptocurrencies, currencies as a whole? So today, I'm about to get into it. I'm gonna break it down for you guys on a beginner's level. If you guys wanna get more in depth into it, let me know right now. I'd like to be right now for more tutorials, I guess you could call it. But I'm going to break down these charts or how you can read these charts in a very simple matter because I know when I was trying to learn how to read charts, I was watching all these YouTube videos and they was all complicated. People was telling me all this crazy stuff. They was, they was using all these big words. They was using all these big terminologies and I, I didn't understand none of it. So I'm going to try to make it very simple for if you're even a five-year-old, you'll be able to go on this go on this website, look at a chart and be like, yeah, it's finna go up. Dad, put a buy in. You feel me? So without further ado, let's just get right into this. So here we are in trading view. I made up all these drawings. You might be like, what the heck is this stuff? I'm going to explain it to you guys. But first of all, when you guys are in, um, well, when you guys are going to look at charts, basically you got to go to trading view. This is what most people, I can't even type right now. What is going on? You got to go to trading view. This is what most people use. If you're a trader, if you're anybody that looks at stocks, crypto, um, regular currencies, this is where most people trade on. So this is the home screen. It's going to look something like this. All you got to do is come to the top left corner and press chart. And it's basically going to take you to kind of the screen that I was at before. But before we get into an actual chart, I made a little drawing for you guys. I hope you guys can appreciate my drawing skills. We've got a red candlestick, green. Why are these two greens different? colors let's just imagine they're both the same color right a red candlestick you might be like what's these lines on the top i'm gonna explain it all for you i'm gonna explain it very simply too so you gotta understand it completely hopefully by the end of this video if you need to watch the video back again i'm gonna try and make the video not long at all but let's just hop right into it so we have all these red candlesticks we have these green candlesticks basically what these mean these candlesticks mean is red it went down green it went up green it went up red it went down and when I say goes down or went up from, it's went down or went up from the previous candlestick. So I didn't draw these out perfectly how they would be on a regular chart, but let's just imagine the price came down from the top of this red one all the way down here. Um, and let's just imagine this candlestick started right here. Because each candlestick, now I gotta move my line, hold on. I should put the line up here. Um, each of these candlesticks represents a certain time frame that you chose. Now, um, if you look in the top left corner up here, you can say five minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, four hours. Each of these consider whatever time frame you choose. So for right now, we're gonna be talking about an hourly time frame. And what that means is basically each of these candles represents what happened in one hour. Now, let's say four of these together, if I put on a four hour time frame, all of this, all of these four candles will be bunched up into one candlestick and I'll show you guys what I mean in a little second after I get through my drawing kind of explain what the heck candlesticks are how you can read them and everything like that so you might be wondering we have this big body of red and then we have lines at the top and lines at the bottom and in some of these drawings the lines are really long up here with a small body some of it is really small body with line long lines on the top and long lines on the bottom and some of it is a real big body of um red or green whatever it is um, with little lines on the top and bottom. And basically what this means, we call the, the part with the thick, she thick, 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 but we call the thick part, right? The part that has all the color on it, that is called the body. These lines are called wicks. So if you know a regular candle, like I don't got a candle, I don't even know I was looking around, but just imagine a regular candle, what's the part that you light, that you put on fire? It's called the wick, right? So these are all different wicks. They, the wicks can be different sizes depending on what I'm about to tell you guys in a little second. So like I told you guys, all of these represent what happened in one hour. So what that means is, let's say the price started all the way up, hold on. Let's say the price started the hour before, the price ended right here. This is where the last candlestick ended. Let's just imagine, hold on, wait, what's going on, man? Take this off. Um, let's just imagine, let me move this over. Let's just imagine the price was right here. It went all the way up to the top of here and came all the way down here. Now the next hour, let's say this candlestick was 12 noon. It hit one o'clock and now the candlestick started right at the top of this one. That means the price went in this whole hour and all of one o'clock, one, 105, 110, whatever it was, the whole entire one o'clock, right? 
It started right here. That means the price went all the way down to the end of this wick. It could have went all the way up to the end of this wick, but after the hours up, after 159 hits, well, after two o'clock hits, the price ended in this box. So this is where the price was as a whole in this box at the end of that one hour. Once that hour timer is up, the price was here. Now, like I said, within that hour, it could have went all the way up here and all the way down here, but it stayed in this area or this is where it closed. Then on to the next candlestick. So this was one o'clock, this is 12 o'clock, this was one o'clock. Now this would be two o'clock. Let me put my drawing back to where I had it just for purposes of showing you guys. Um, so like I said, these aren't all perfectly drawn out because technically this candlestick would have started, actually it started perfectly right here. Did I do that before? I don't know. But the price would have started literally right here um, at the bottom of here. If, the, if this was the candlestick that was after this one and the price would have went all the way up here, but at the end of two o'clock, because this is the candle that represents two o'clock PM, whatever it is, whatever time frame it is, but let's just say for example, this is two o'clock. The price went all the way up here, but at the end of two o'clock, when three o'clock hit, the price was only right here. Now you can see it's green because it rose from the previous part that it closed out. It closed literally right here. And when we say closed, I mean, that's the end of that um, candlestick, the end of that hour or whatever time frame you have. So if it's the end of a minute time frame, whatever candlestick you chose, five minute, 15 minute, but for now it's the end of the hour time frame. So the price closed right here at the end of the time frame. The price started right here at Two, is this our two o'clock candle or three? I forgot. Let's just say it's a two o'clock candle. At two o'clock, the price was right here. The price literally, oh wait, what's going on? Why is it still drawing? Oh, okay, so at two o'clock, the price was literally, and why is it pulling the line? This, this is just messing me up right now. I'm just trying to, let me move this line out of the way. The price started all the way down here, right? And then during the whole time of two o'clock, it could have went all the way up here but then it ain't like this area so it came all the way back down here and it closed ended up closing right here and on to the next hour so this would be the next hour this would be three o'clock candle but basically what that means is if you see all these different lines these lines tell you stuff the body tells you stuff but the lines as in where the price was at throughout that whole entire hour or whatever candlestick you have it helps you predict what the next candlestick is might do now like i said this is called technical analysis if you're a trader you know this technical analysis which is looking at charts this fundamental analysis which is kind of like the news like let's say for bitcoin if elon musk tweets yo bitcoin is the best thing in the freaking world it's gonna go all the way up just because of the fundamentals of elon musk saying bitcoin is going all the way up and the price will move um it's fundamentals the technical analysis that's the main two there are different other analysis but the main two are fundamental and technical analysis now like i said charts it's technical analysis and they're not always 100 percent right nothing is ever 100 percent right no fundamental analysis is 100 percent right no technical analysis is 100 percent right we just use technical analysis to help us predict our next move if we're trying to go on for a buy if we're trying to go for a sell if we're thinking okay is now a good time to buy bitcoin or should i wait because bitcoin is too high right now this will tell you it all or kind of give you a whole wide view scale thingy of what the heck is about to happen next or what might happen next i should say so like i was saying all of these wick parts because we know what wicks are now it's the lines all of these wicks tell us certain things they're kind of tattletale they're kind of like okay the next um candlestick is probably going to do this you feel me so there are different candlesticks that we can that can name doji shooting stars um gravestones hammers um i'll try and get into all those before the video is up i don't want to make this video too long i just kind of want you guys to understand the basics of it so when you look at a chart you're like okay this is what this means this is why this candlestick looks like this this is why this next candlestick might be this i just want to give you guys basics but like i said you can get really deep into it with different indicators um if you guys want make if you guys want me to make a video about like my favorite indicators um i can do that and basically what indicators are they're basically things that will also help you predict certain things within technical analysis um like i said they're not 100 percent correct though but they can help you and um in your prediction of price point action and stuff like that so um where was i at? Oh, i was talking about the different patterns right so this would be considered an inverted hammer this would be considered a uh a doji this is a regular candlestick this is a regular candlestick um and basically what these mean so this inverted hammer right a hammer would be the complete opposite which would be 
the price up here, it will be a red candle or whatever, whatever color it is, it's just the price, the full body of it will be on top here. This would be a hammer up here. This is an inverted hammer. And basically what these things mean, and keep in mind everything I tell you, all these patterns can be reversed. So if I show you it, an example in one of the green, it can also be an example of red. And I'll try and get into those examples a little bit later. But um, basically what this hammer would mean, if I saw this, if I saw a whole um, uptrend, let's say it was a bunch of green candles, big green candle, let me just draw for example. Okay, let's just imagine this is green. I seem to just make it green real quick. So this is green. We have one green candlestick right here. We have another green candlestick right here. Um, I see a whole bunch of green, green candlesticks going up. That means it's on an uptrend, right? Because going up, the trend is up. If it's a lot of red candlesticks going down, the trend is down, very simple stuff. So if it's on an uptrend and I'm trying to go in for a sell, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm waiting for the price to tell me, okay, the price is about to go down. Um, I want to go in for a sell. I would look for something like this, an inverted hammer, a green inverted hammer. And basically why I would look for this is just due to the fact that we have a bunch of candlesticks going upwards. And then this candlestick right here, it looked like it was going up because throughout that hour it went all the way up here, but then it ended up closing down here because they didn't like the area up here. It did not like being this high up. It didn't like the price up here. So the price came all the way back here. So that's telling me, okay, it didn't like being that high. So maybe this is the end of the uptrend. And then I would look for another confirmation where it's like the next candlestick comes down and maybe it looks something like this, this doji right here. Um, or even better, if it looks like a, if it's a little red one, I can't even pull my drawing without the line. If it's a red one that is, um, comes down like this, where the line comes up, where the price comes up during the time frame, the wick, but then it ends up going down. I would see that as, okay, now this is a different trend. The trend is changing. It was going up, green, 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 up, but then the price came all up here. It didn't like it, so it came down here. Then the next time frame, it started right at this line. Like I said, it started literally at this line. It went up here again to try and go higher. The price tried to go higher, but it did not like it. So it ended up coming right back down here. Then this would tell me, okay, the price is probably going to keep going down. And like I said, it's not 100% all the time, but um, it can help you predict it. I'll try and show you guys some examples in a second, um, but that's basically what a, a hammer would mean. And it could be the same thing on reverse. If you just imagine a bunch of red candles coming down here, and then you get a red one with a long wick on the downside so that means the price tried to go all the way down here and keep the downtrend going but instead it ended up closing right here you feel me because then that would show me okay if the price doesn't like being down here it's probably gonna try going up now you feel me so let me try and show you guys some real life examples let me clear this drawings everything like that boom so this is what a real candlestick would, uh, a real candlestick chart would look like. Now on TradingView, you can have multiple different charts. You can have a line chart, which is probably what you see on Robinhood or um, Coinbase or whatever. Um, baseline chart. You can have like a bunch of different charts, but we use candlestick charts because they're the easiest to help us predict certain um, price movements. And just like I was telling you guys about before, this inverted hammer um, or this this gravestone doji. Um, right here it was on a downtrend we see red a little green candlestick a big red candlestick it's on a downtrend coming from all the way up here all the way to down here then we see this candlestick where it's a long wick at the bottom that means the price tried to go all the way down here it did not like it and then what it ended up doing next a bunch of green candlesticks going on the uptrend so like i'm saying it helps you predict certain things um let me try and find another example for you guys right now i'm on a bitcoin um chart bitcoin to us dollar which basically means bitcoin versus the us dollar which in simple terms is literally just how much us dollars is one bitcoin worth um this over here is just like my favorite list of different currencies ethereum versus the us dollar which is how many us dollars is one ethereum worth and all that different type of stuff now this chart looks very messy we see a lot of big um green candlesticks a lot of big red candlesticks a lot of wicks a lot of long wicks just doing a bunch of stuff so i'm gonna try and i'm gonna go to a daily chart because it might be easier to um just see some stuff um let me try and find an example of a, a doji, which is the end, we call it the end of a trend candlestick. Um, I can't 
find one right now. Um, but we can use this as an example again. Um, we see a little body right here. It's on a downtrend, a bunch of red candles, a little body right here. The price came all the way down here during the hour while well, I'm on a daily chart right now. So the price came all the way down here during the day, but it, it closed right here. Then right after this candlestick, what did it do? Shot all the way up and it started an uptrend going up. Um, uptrend basically just means higher highs and higher lows. So what I mean by that is, um, so, um, each price, price doesn't just go straight up. Price goes up and down a little bit, up and down a bit, little bit, up and down a little bit. So for example, um, let me draw it out for a second. So price goes up, down a little bit, up, down a little bit. Price never goes straight up like that. That's just not what price does. It'll go, like I said, up, down a little bit, up, down a little, up, down a little. And that's considered an uptrend versus downtrend to be down, up a little bit, down, up a little bit, down, up a little bit. So um, basically what I'm saying is higher highs and higher lows just means there's a high high right here. This is a high, and then this is the low point. This is the lowest point it went before going right back up. So then this would be another higher high because this is the highest point before it went going up. And then this would be the next lower low because this low is higher than this low. Well, this, this, this low up here is higher than this low. This high up here is higher than this high. So that's how we know it's an uptrend because we have higher highs, which are these up here and higher lows, which are these right here. And on a downtrend, we have lower lows and lower highs. So if you can just flip the example I just said, this is a, um, this would be considered the high. This would be considered the low. This is a lower low because this one right here is lower than this one. And this high right here, well, this high right here would be lower than this one. So higher highs and higher lows, that's how you predict or kind of see what type of trend it on. It's on, um, it, whether it's on an uptrend or downtrend. And for example, let me show you guys on a candlestick chart. Um, so this is a nice little uptrend right here. Um, sorry, I did not mean to draw that. So it's just a match coming from here. High, came down a little bit. High, came down a little bit. High, came down a little bit. So this would be up, considered an uptrend because we have, this is our first high. This is our second high. This high is higher than this high. So we're on an uptrend. This high is higher than this high, so we're still on an uptrend. Like I said, higher lows. This is our first low, this is our second low, and our third low would be over here. So this would be the change of a um, trend, because as you see, this is a higher high, then a low, higher high, then a higher low, higher high, then a lower low, because this low is now lower than this one. And then you see how the price just starts going down. The price goes up a little bit and then down all the way here. So the price changed from being in an uptrend to a downtrend. That's how you kind of just tell um, if the price is on an uptrend or a downtrend. That's the fast way to do it. Now, like I said, you can get more in depth into it, but I just want to show you guys just the um, the basics of it and everything like that. Um, if you guys want me to do a video getting into like all the different candlestick um, patterns, because I showed you guys just a few candlestick patterns that show you if a price is going to go up or a price is going to go down. Um, like for example, here is a, um, I just seen one. A shooting star would be considered this one right here. This is a shooting star right here, which would basically mean um, this little green candlestick. We see it went down here and then most of the body is a big body on the top of it. This is not a perfect example. Uh, okay, this is a better example. So um, this green one right here, we see we had a red candle went all the way down here. Didn't like being in this area, but so I ended up closing over here. And this candlestick right here ended up being a shooting star, which is basically when it's a long wick at the bottom, like right down here, long wick at the bottom. And then the body is at the top, which means the price tried to go down here, but the price ended up closing all the way up here. And then it shows you it's going to go up. That's what happens most of the time. Um, we see a, a shooting star versus a reverse shooting star, inverse shooting star. If I can find an example really fast, this one right here, this candlestick right here, where it's long wick at the top, the body's at the bottom, and then it keeps going down. Then we get a little doji, doji right here. We have a small body, key. it goes up a little bit, down a little bit. Um, well, the wick is up a little bit and the wick is down a little bit as well. So that means there's uncertainty in the market. The market doesn't know if it wants to go up or down. So if it's on a downtrend, then we get a big doji. Most of the time, that's the end of the trend. And in this example, it is the end of the trend because we have, it was going down right here, but then it ended up reversing, giving us a big full candlestick. We barely see any wick on this candlestick. And then you see the price just shoots all the way, all the way up here. 
Um, so I hope I'm making it pretty simple for you guys. I think I'm gonna stop now. I can make a more in-depth video about different patterns because there's patterns on um, that don't just include one candlestick. They can include this whole high right here, this whole high right here, this whole high right here, and this whole high right here. Kind of making support and resistance zones. I'll make a video about that. If you guys want, let me know in the comments down below. I hope it was simple. If you guys have any questions, just drop them inside the comments down below. I'll try and answer them inside the comments or if I need to, I'll make a video about it. Um, yeah, I hope it made it pretty simple, not complicated, because I know when I was trying to learn this stuff, it was pretty complicated. I was watching hours and hours of videos and people was telling me wicks and candles, and I was like, what the heck does this mean? But in this video, I tried to be as simple as possible, and I just wanted to be basic. I didn't want to get too in-depth into what the heck all these different patterns mean, support and resistance, all these different, drawing all these lines and shapes and everything like that. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed it, make sure you like right now. I'm see you on the next video. Stay safe. Good luck on all your trades. And like I said, if you have any questions, drop in the comments down below. Peace.